After departing from Ushaya in Argentina, we spent a day at sea as we made our way to the Falkland Islands. At that time, we encountered two finback whales, which are the second largest mammals in the whole world. It was my first time to sight wild whales in the water, and though it was short, it was incredible to see them from a close distance. Hey guys, it's another new day here in the MS Fram and right now it's about 7.30 in the morning and it was announced just a while ago that we have finally arrived at the Falkland Islands. We are actually going to do our first landing at West Point Island and the expedition team has started to do the landing operation there so that they can prepare everything beforehand. This was announced a while ago so yeah, after they are done with that, they are going to start calling the boat groups one by one so that we can all gradually make our way down to the island. Overall, there are about eight boat groups and we are in boat number eight. It's all pretty random but there's not really any significance as to what boat number you are in because the bottom line is you will do the landing and you will get there. So once we arrive at West Point Island, we will do a two kilometer hike so that we can reach the colonies of the Black Row albatrosses as well as the Southern Rock Hopper Penguin. After that, in the afternoon, we are heading over to another island which is called Skarkas Island. And that one will involve a 10 km hike which is optional if you want to do it, you can, if you don't, it's fine. But we are going to do it because I don't think it will be too hard. All in all, I'm just excited to finally do my first landing with Hurtigruten, so let's see how everything goes. By the way, Hurtigruten's service crew is primarily made up of Filipinos. So I somehow felt right at home as they went out of their way to serve me some typical Filipino food. Meanwhile, as we waited for the expedition team to finish their preparations, I went on to collect the clothing and gear that I needed for the shore landing. And once our boat number was called, Jonas and I went down to deck number 2 to put on our life jackets in preparation for the Polar Circle boat ride. We had until lunchtime to explore this island, and we only needed to follow the trail that was marked with red flags. Otherwise, there was a car service in case you didn't want to do the hike. It was clear to see where the colony was located given the number of albatrosses that were flying around. And as we got nearer, it was amazing how close we can get to them. And then of course, mixed together with this beautiful black-browed albatrosses are the cute southern rockhopper penguins, in which some of them were still incubating their eggs. This was my first wild penguin sighting, and you could just imagine my excitement. non-hikers you can go as far as you want it's flagged and then the beach is the lower part leopard beach is on the other side and there will be guides there to, 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 to let you know where you can go Dan our ornithologist is on the beach Chris is there and Rika also there are a lot of birds if you have any questions just make sure you don't get too close to them and don't scare them and enjoy this landing so after 
doing the West Island. We are now hiking Carcass Island. But before we do the 10 kilometer hike, we are stopping over for some cookies. In this island, we saw several birds while we did our 10 kilometer hike. But the best birds of them all? The penguins. At the end of the island by the beach was a bigger colony of Magellanic penguins. It helps to note though that we were advised to maintain a 5 meter distance from the penguins so as not to stress them. Of course, touching is not allowed either. However, most of them were curious, so there were many instances wherein they were super close to us, which then makes for a great experience. In other words, we don't approach them, we let them approach us. We even saw a leopard seal in the beach who was waiting for a careless penguin to feed on. And indeed, there was one. They had quite a chase which I managed to get a short yet shaky footage of. It was really thrilling to watch, but fortunately the Magellanic penguin was fast and lucky, so he survived. Today is day number five and right now we have finally arrived at Stanley which is the capital of the Falkland Islands. For the whole day we have the free time to explore the city itself but other than that you also have the option to take some extra excursions and some of them are a history tour of the town, bird watching, uh, a highlight tour, and a nature walk. And there's also one that's called the Lagoon Bluff Cove Tour, which is what we will be doing today. From what they have told us, the Bluff Cove is a very huge farm, which has a very interesting lagoon because it houses colonies of king penguins, uh, gentoo penguins, as well as... What was it called again? Mage Magellan? Magellan, yeah. Magellanic penguins. And then after that, we are going to head back to the ship by 4 o'clock. There's one interesting note that I see here though. It says that the Argentine forces left behind between 25,000 to 30,000 plastic landmines and it is indiscernible to metal detectors in 1982. Most of them are near Stanley, but all are clearly fenced and marked. Do not attempt to enter any minefields or remove minefield sites. Well, I'm definitely not gonna go anywhere near those. <laughs> so it's going to be yet another interesting day. another beach that you'll see that runs along the edge of the sea okay and that's where you'll find more kings and their chicks here we've got about 2,000 penguins okay gen 2s especially and a few um, kings three of the kings are on eggs basically white flags they're the important bit just stay outside the white flags and you know that way you won't frighten them or disturb them too much
After this tour, we drove back to the city center of Stanley. By the way, the Falkland Islands are a British overseas territory and there are about 3,000 British locals by birth or descent. Part 3 of this expedition will cover our next destination which is South Georgia. I'll be posting this soon so please don't forget to subscribe to stay updated. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.